Hi, Mike German here from Visual Animation. Right, today we're going to build and fly a kite. It's a very windy day, so this seems to be really appropriate. So, yeah, I mean, this is, um, I think it's, I think you'll agree, we've got quite, quite a good um, representation here of how a kite flies. Now, we can obviously, you know, you can spend more time on this and, you know, add connectors in here and push the poles into them and connect it and probably put stitching on it. You know, you could really go to town on on, on the look of this. But I thought, you know, I haven't spent loads of time on the modeling, but um, more time on the on the working out, you know, like the physics of the flying of this thing. So that's really what this is about today. It's just getting it to sort of act like this, you know, and start to really start to feel like a kite you know where the, where all these cords and things connect up and how it flaps about in the wind and all of that so let's just see how we get on with this there's quite a few things to um to get right for this to for this to work so let's um let's start with a new scene and let's start to build this kite right so what we do first is if we could just go here and grab the four side and then let's put 150 in the B just to make it a little bit taller and then if we just make that editable and let's go to point mode and let's drag the bottom point down so we get that kind of classic kind of diamond shape kite this is you know there's a lot of kites isn't there with stunt kites and box kites and all sorts of things but we're just going for this really classic one that you see here you know with the four colors and the sticks so that's what we're building here. Right, so we start with that four side and then we want to just extrude that out. So just Alt and extrude. And we just now want to grab a plane because I, I find this a better way of getting an even grid. Um, there are other methods, but I just prefer this one where we can just go, right, let's turn on ground shading with lines. So yeah, I'll put 80 by 80 in there and we just, we're just going to bring this extrude so it's poking through like that and then we're just going to grab a ball and we're going to put the plane and the extrude in the ball and then we're going to change the ball um, type to a intersect b all right so we get that so that's what we want we just want to grid evenly across this diamond shape all right so then just right click and go to connect objects and delete Okay, let's go back to object mode. Let's get rid of all these tags that we don't need here. And let's call that kite. All right, so that's, that's the start. We've, we've got ourselves a, like the fabric part of the kite. Right, now we need to build the cross um, that it attaches to. And I find using rope and splines here better than using connectors because it just seems they can kind of hold themselves better. So what I do is go to Go to the front view, zoom up to it like that. And then we'll go across here to the spline pen and we're just gonna draw a line. So just click in that corner and then go across and click on the other end there. It doesn't have to be spot on. Then escape out and then we'll go to the top line there, click and then go right down to the bottom and then click and then escape out. So we should have, we come out of that mode we should now have a spline like a cross like that you see and we're just going to add let's put that back in there um, we're just going to add a um, a sweep to that and an end side just so we can sweep some geometry onto it so we go to sweep then we go to end side um, bring the end side right down to something like let's try point three or something it's very thin sticks okay so we're just going to put the inside under the sweep and then the spline underneath so we get this um right let's go into uh perspective mode now so you can see um yeah just that kind of look just a nice thin little s set of sticks there probably probably go a little bit bigger because of the let's go 0.5 that'll do okay and the kite let's just make sure that the fabric is one side of this line or the other don't have it in the middle let's go to the front like that so the sticks are just behind it let's go really close like that okay 
So we've got that. Now let's, let's build all the pieces first before we add the dynamics. So now we need a, a connecting piece of, of cord that goes from this top one down to the bottom one. And that's what, it's, that's what the main line is going to connect to. So we go to arc. Okay, that's obviously a bit big at the moment, the arc. So, and also facing the wrong way. So we need to spin that on the, on the ZY. And we want to change this. So let's bring it down. Let's bring it down to, know, let's try, let's try like 70 or something. And then we're just going to do the start and end angle. And we're going to change these until it pokes through there and then goes to there but I think we want to I think we want less than 70 let's go 50 let's also push it in a little bit further and up if you have a look at an actual kite like this you'll see where 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 this cable sorry this little cord is used and I think if we go about there then we just bring this back just so it's just touching like that actually do this from the side view if you like and then you'll see you know like that look and you'll be able to see it just touch it doesn't ab be absolutely spot on because this is going to um, use a connector in a minute and it's going to it's going to connect to it that way uh, let's just have a look at the type so the arc is a uniform of eight that might be okay we, we can change that if it isn't uh, all right so if we come back out to there we, we now need to sweep this so we can actually copy this group here, this sweep group. Um, just Alt and copy it, or sorry, Control and copy it. And then instead of the spline, um, delete that, and then we put the arc under there, right? So we've just used the uh, sweep dynamics there that we use for this cross. Um, but the end side's a bit big because this is just going to be a thin cord. So this is why I changed this to 0.5 so we can now use the cords at a much smaller size so it actually looks more in proportion. Okay, so that's the first piece of cord. Um, we now need the main cord that attaches to that. Uh, again, if we come to the side view here, I think I've just skewed that a little. <laughs> if we come to the side view here, we can then choose the... Uh, use the spline pen again and what I want to do is just connect it on there and then just come down yeah it doesn't have to be let's just try and go a little bit bigger let's yeah just just make a line like that you know which is just it, it, it can even be up you know vertical it doesn't have to be sloping we just want to connect um, a spline pen point and then have it long like it's the cord uh, because if we come into this perspective view now, it might not be lined up. I think we're okay though. That's not too bad, look. So that's roughly what's going to happen. Now we need to get another sweep. So again, let's copy one of these. Well, let's start to just name these now, just so we don't get confused. So that one is the frame, okay, which is the cross. The first sweep, let's just call that like a chord. And then let's copy that out and then call this like main, main line, something like that. It's the main line that's gonna be held, so that you, yeah, that you hold to fly the kite. Uh, so instead of the arc, let's delete that and let's put this spline in that we've just made, which is here, look. So we've now got all these pieces, which are gonna be like now dynamic together to make this thing work as a kite. All right, so we've got those. So let's start to add on the dynamics. So the main line on the spline, we need to right click and we need to add rope to that one. Um, let's just start adding them all in and we can see where the connectors are gonna go. So on the cord, let's open that up. And on the arc, we want to right click and add rope because we want this and the main line to be rope. Uh, on the frame, again, that's using rope dynamics for this cross. So right click and add rope to that one. Um, and the kite itself, we're gonna right click and add cloth, okay? Let's come out that, back to object mode. So let's have a look at where we're gonna use connectors here. We wanna connect certain things together. So we want the, the cross 
to pick up connections onto this fabric, you know, like on these corners here, which would be in a real kite, you'd have these kind of welded pockets or connectors on these points here, wouldn't you? And then you'd feed the rods into these points. Uh, so we're gonna make it connect on those corners. And the cord will have this main line connect to this cord at this point. And, the, and then this other cord, this kind of inner cord piece, will connect to the wooden structure on the back here. Okay, so it sounds complicated, but let's let's break it down into, into bits. So if we turn off the kite, and let's just deal with connecting the, the cables and string or whatever you want to call it to, to, the, main co uh, to the main cross here. So, right, so if we take the cord, which is this one, the arc, and then we add a connector to that. So we right click and we go simulation connector. If we go to update live, and then we just move the search radius out, but it's going to start to pick up on rope, anything that's in the, in the simulation system, it's going to pick up on. So if we move this radius forward, look, you'll see it's going to start to connect. Ah, what, what we need to do, because it's going to connect to the material, what we need to do is turn off the dynamics of the cloth on the kite, okay? And then we'll turn it on later. So we go here uh, on basic and we go to an uncheck enable. So now we're going to connect this arc to this wooden frame. But if you go in close, you'll see we haven't got any geometry on here. There's no like segments this way. So we need to add a couple of segments in. We don't want loads because the more segments we add, the more this is going to turn to cloth and start to move around and bend and everything. So we just want to add just two. So if we go to the frame, we go to spline, and then on here, we want to go uniform two. Okay, so I'll add in two points on here, two, two subdivisions. Okay, so let's have a look at where they've gone. So we've got one at the bottom here, and then we've got one at this point. So what we could do then is, let's just get the, get the arc to be, let's just click on, there we go. Let's get the arc to then position where these, sec, these intersections are on here. So we want to just make the arc a little bit smaller, and then bring it up. Somewhere there, let's go a little bit smaller. That's it. And then we've got that kind of intersection and we can just go back slightly on the arc, on the degrees, just so it's close to the frame. Doesn't matter if it's overlapping or not quite as long, it will connect up in a second. Right, so that's where it needs to go because that's where the cross pieces are. So if we now go to the arcs connector and then we refresh it by moving these numbers, look, it's going to jump to these little cross intersections that we put in, right? So it's gonna connect up to this main wooden pole. Okay, so it's got those connected. Um, we wanna do the same with this main line. So we just need to move this over and connect it now, say somewhere in the middle of this line, like that. Like I say, you don't have to be absolutely spot on. You just want to be somewhere near one of these cross joints, you know, one of these segments here that then it will link to it. So if we now go to the, not the frame, sorry, to the uh, main, sorry, to the cord. <laughs> I'll get it right in a minute. If we go to the cord and then we just, just move this. Look, you'll see here, it will just jump on. So we've now got a connection here to the, to the frame and then we've got a connection here to the main line. So all of these kind of structural pieces are now connected. Yep. Um, let's just see while we're doing this, whether we should add one at the bottom here, because we want to anchor it down. So if we just go onto this main line, click on the end, and then we can go to rope, and we can go to here where it says fixed, and we can say set. So it'll actually set Sorry, we're in, the, we're in the wrong place. <laughs> we need to be clicking on the main spline. There we go. And then we press set and it goes purple like that. Okay. 
So we've got the rope and the frame now all connected up with connectors. So what we can do now is turn the kite back on. So let's make it visible and then go to the cloth tag and then enable. So we've got the cloth tag now we can connect to the frame. Uh, let's turn off the dynamics for the rope on the main line and the cord because they will get in the way of the connections. So let's just take, turn that off and then the cord, let's go to that one and turn that off. All right, so now we should, if we go to the frame, we need to just, again, every time we make changes on here or do different things, it messes up the connections, but we all always go back to here and just jiggle it and it will all join back up. All right, so what we're doing here though is we're, we're increasing these. Let's go for a few more connections. Let's keep pushing this up. All right, so these now are the frame holding to the cloth. All right, so all of these connections here are connecting it on the corners at the bottom, the corners and a few points um, through the middle. It's actually holding this material to this wooden frame. So I think we've got all the connections in the right place. Now let's just turn back on the rope dynamics for the main line and for the cord. And let's check control D that we've got no gravity in the seam. We need that to be zero. And wind, we need the wind to now blow against this. So it's just, yeah, we've got the wind it's all fixed down we'll have to have a look at these numbers um to see because what could happen here because we've got um so let's have a look at the collider sides as well before we go any further so if we look at the collider side of the kite we've actually got it on both sides which means objects will collide to but on both sides it's not usually a good idea to do that um because this frame, for example, could collide with this side. And if it goes through the geometry, it could, it could collide with the front as well. Then you'll start to get these intersections. But we need to say both because we've got rope cord on the front and then the wooden cross frame on the back. So we are actually getting colliding on both sides of this. And the reason we may have to look at this as we go along is this could cause problems with intersections because of the way it's colliding. Right, let's just see. The only way we only way we can really do this is just, just to try and play it and see what kind of results we get, and then we can adjust it. So let's just press play and see what happens. Okay, don't worry about some of these little pieces that you see breaking off. They're they're just extra bits of uh, geometry on there, which you know the wind is obviously <laughs> blowing bits of it apart. But it's you know once it's gone, it's it, it comes out the scene, and and you can just carry on with this, and it looks absolutely fine. It's just where it's um, it's just where it's like, like the wind power is kind of blowing bits of the geometry away. So let's just let it settle down and just watch what that's doing and see what we can add to this. Now, what I would say is we want more tension on that cord, so it's a lot stronger. Now we can either have more wind, which could really damage this too much the kite itself or we could play with the target length of this material of this um, rope spline so if we have a look at the, the rope the main line we've got a target length of 90 a mass of one so we could bring the mass and the weight of this down so we could have it like 0 0.1 let's just check the size so we've got yeah, we've got a really small radius here. We've got, um, let's go 0 0.05 um, on the the inside, 0 0.05. So on the, on the collider radius here, we need to say 0 0.05. They need to match basically. Whatever the inside is needs needs to match with the radius on the, on the rope tag. Uh, so the inside here, let's go 0 0.05 and let's, go to the rope and do the same and on the frame we have let's do 0.5 so it's not quite as small let's go to the rope here and go and it's already set to 0.5 
All right, let's just have a quick look now. See if we've got any any further forward with this. Okay. Let's see how that's moving around in the scene. So we've got a little bit more tension on this rope now, as you can see. Look, it's blowing, it's blowing around quite a bit there. So we can play around with. Let's just have a look at. On the frame, let's just have a look at the mix animation. Yeah, so we've got 0.5. So we're holding, we're holding this frame. So if we take off mix animation, so we're not holding anything back, it's it's going to move around a lot more. So one is a really good balance for me for for the for this kite to feel like it's kind of being kind of uplifted up on these kind of warmer thermals and the wind up there. So. Yeah, you really got to play around with this until you, until it feels right. You know, does it does it feel natural? Does it feel like a real kite would fly? You know, like for me, this this cord here feels to me like it maybe should be a bit tighter, or maybe there's too much movement here. Um, you just have to adjust. So what we could do on the main line that we could say, let's have a look the target length. Let's say we bring that down to 80, so it makes this cord tighter. Let's just try 80 and see what happens. You see, it's trying to reduce this size to 80% if it's if it's of its actual size. So the more target length you reduce, the tighter this cord will get, but it will also pull um, it too tight. But I think 80 is quite a good balance. But there's a lot of movement there, so we could even say. You know, maybe the wind. Maybe we could put it just to acceleration. Maybe drop this down a little, like eight hundred and four hundred. Let's give that a go. Okay, so you've got less wind now, so it feels maybe it's not enough. So this is completely up. To, you know, this is down to you. You know, does it feel right like this? This is like a more of a, a normal breeze with a kite blowing. And then obviously the, the more you bring these numbers up, the more the thing will kind of blow around in, in like a like a hurricane gale or something. <laughs> but it's, it's fun to try all this stuff, isn't it? Just see what, what is a good kind of feel for this. You know, does it disrupt too much? Does it actually stay together? And I think those numbers are working okay. We've got some good tension here, look, on this on this cord and some good tension on that one um, 2000 on the wind it's not destroying it it's still staying there it's probably a little bit strong so again you know just bring these numbers down and just keep trying it have a look see how it feels does it feel right and if it does then you can move on to doing the next stage and the next stage really is just to well, there's, there's, there's the colouring stage, and then there's just adding on these streamers. So for the streamer part, what I did was I just got a plane and spun it over, and then just shrunk it right down to probably four. Took out the width segments. Let's reduce the height. Let's go about like 150, and then we put that on the bottom. And we add more height segments, okay? And then we right click on the plane there and add a cloth tag. And we also want to right click and add a connector. And on the connector, we just update live and increase the radius and the max connections here. We should, ah, well, it will do if we get it lined up, okay? <laughs> So we need to make sure it's lined up. So we, to do that, we can we can obviously choose different views and we can make sure that we we line this up in the right place just by moving it like that and then moving it underneath. And that's probably gonna push it right into the middle where we want it. And now if we go to the, the connections, you see it will just, it will link it straight to it. There we go. So let's press play. And there we go, that the streamer. And obviously you can have more than one. You could put multiple streams coming out of here. You could add 
bows onto here, which is one of the um, you know like traditional ones. Uh, it's actually turning itself upside down now, but it settles down. I think this is the wind and the turbulence, which are kind of adding adding to this look. Yeah. So now you can see it's starting to starting to slow. I think it's. <coughs> I think we can actually take the weight down. Um, I think the stream is too heavy. So if we go on to cloth that we've got mass of one. So we go point one. So point yeah, point one. And collide with the front. So I did change the collider side. Okay, let's run that again because it's much lighter now. So I think it was weighing it down. There we go. Really got to keep, keep that in mind. The mass of these things. You know, if, if they're too heavy, they will not act as as what you'd imagine you know they'd be um th th they'd be too heavy for the scene it'd be like having some really really heavy item hanging on the end of this um kite and obviously these streamers don't really weigh much so keep that in mind when you're adding them on so you know the streamer that's been a bit creased there look, but you get the idea it's it, you know give this a go add your colors to it add a logo to it add some wood textures and things for the for the poles and stuff like that add some little connector caps on and you'll you'll start to build a really nice kite scene if you've got any questions about this tutorial any issues with this because this is quite technical you've got to get it just right for this to fly and feel right if you get bad intersections you know there's a few happening here which we could iron out um yeah just list you list it in the comments and we'll see if we can get this to to work um i've included this in the link below if you just want to grab these ready-made files with the streamers the colors everything all in the scene a couple of dollars one or two dollars i think it is down below for my gum road grab that and you can just have these ready-made scenes so you can see how i've done it and pick it apart and you can learn that way if you wish okay that's it my name is mike german i'll speak to you very soon in another video Take care, goodbye for now.